In this episode, we're going to look at how to implement VLANs and trunking. I'll show you how to do it, and we'll talk about those concepts along the way. We're working for a company that is getting ready to deploy a set of new switches in a branch office. We're going to be working in a lab to test out the VLAN and trunking configurations that are planned. We're going to configure and test those VLANs and trunks. We'll be discussing how to configure VLANs, assign ports to VLANs, configure static trunking, and then finally, we're going to discuss configuring dynamic trunking. Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. This episode is part of my series on configuration examples for the CCNA. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. Implement VLANs and trunking. Here you can see I have our lab open on the left side. This is our work area. This is our topology. This is where we'll be going and configuring our devices. On the right side, we have the packet tracer activity window. It has all the instructions in there. I do not have the Word document open because there is no questions to answer. There's nothing to save to a Word document. In the Packet Tracer Activity window, we have our addressing table. We have all the IP addresses for all seven of our PCs that we have in this lab. Also, we have the switches and their VLANs and SVI configurations right here. Notice that we are using VLANs 10, 20, and 30 as our data VLANs. VLAN 40 is our voice VLAN. And then VLAN 99 we're using for our management or our SVI ports on our switches. Here's our objectives. We're going to configure some VLANs, assign some ports, configure static trunking, and then configure dynamic trunking. On to part one, configure VLANs. Configure VLANs on all three switches refer to the VLAN table. Note VLANs name, VLAN names must match the tables exactly. That means we need to have capital letters where they are, otherwise Packet Tracer won't store them correctly. Let's start off with switch A. Switch A is right here in the center. Go ahead and click on that. I slide this up. I make the window a little bit bigger right to left. Helps with the wrapping. And go ahead and hit enter. At this point in time, we want to configure the VLANs. Oh, we need to go and just create those VLANs on the switches. We need to get into global configuration mode for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and type enable, get us into privilege exec mode, config T to get us into global configuration mode. And then from here, we can go ahead and create the VLANs. Just simply, you put VLAN space and then the number. First one here in our instructions is VLAN 10 called admin. And so we type VLAN space 10, that creates it. Notice how our prompt changes. We are now in the conf VLAN configuration mode. At this point in time, we can go ahead and name it. How we do that is the word name, space, admin, capital A, D, M, I, N, hit enter. That's all we have to do here for part one. Let's go ahead and work through the rest of these. Now, we could go ahead and type exit and then type in VLAN 20 is our next one. Type in our name, space, capital A, C, C, O, N, O, U, N, T, S, hit enter. But instead of typing exit, you can just type in the next VLAN number. Here we can go ahead and type in VLAN 30. Go ahead and press enter. Now we've switched to the we switched to that VLAN. Name, space, our VLAN here is capital H, capital R, VLAN 40. Name it. Capital V voice. And we need to create our management VLAN, VLAN 99. And we call that one management. And the last VLAN we have to create is our native VLAN. Once again, the native VLAN is for frames that don't have that 802.13 tagging that one that says you belong to what frame because when a, when a packet goes across the trunk low or, or trunk link it has to know what what vlan does that belong to and that's where that 802.3 
trunking or tagging comes into play. It'll put a little tag in that field that says, you belong to VLAN 100. And then once it leaves that trunk, the switch can then process that accordingly. So let's go on, create our VLAN 100 and name it native. And once again, best security practices are always move your management VLAN out of the default VLAN and move your native VLAN out of the default VLAN. Once again, the default VLAN is VLAN 1. You can go ahead and type exit once, type exit twice, and we can do a show VLAN here. We can see that we now have VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 99, and 100. Let's make sure we have them spelled correctly. Make sure we have the numbers. Make sure they match up with the table here. That all looks good. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. Let's go on to switch B. Make the window a little bit bigger right to left. Click in the window. There we go. Enable to get into privilege exec mode. Config, config T to get into global configuration mode. Now we can go ahead and create our VLANs. VLAN 10. Name it. Capital A admin. VLAN 20. Capital A accounts. Oh, you got to spell VLAN, right? Wow, got two errors there. And true to Cisco operating system fashion, if you type in something wrong, it'll let you know. And as you can see here, I typed in VLAN, I inverted the L and the A. It gave me an error there, and I didn't catch that right away, and then I went to type the name for the name for that VLAN and I forgot the word name there. So it gave me two errors. I'm gonna go ahead, retype that in correctly, VLAN 20 and in Cisco's operating system, no news is good news. That means we've changed it. We, we created the VLAN if it didn't exist and then we changed to it. Now we can go ahead and name it, capital A accounts. There we go, VLAN 30, name of HR, both capital letters, VLAN 40, name it, voice, capital V, VLAN 99, name it, capital M, manage, mint, there we go, spelt it correctly. And we have to create our native VLAN. So let's go ahead, VLAN 100, and name it native. Exit out, exit out. Do a show VLAN. 10 admin, 20 accounts, 30 HR, 40 voice, 99 management, 100 native. That's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and minimize the window for switch B. Let's click on switch C. Make it a little bit bigger, right to left. Hit enter, type enable for privilege exec mode. Config T to get us into global configure. Wow, global configuration mode. Here we can go ahead and create and name our VLANs. VLAN 10, let's spell VLAN correctly. Name it capital A admin. Create VLAN 20, name it, capital A accounts. Make sure we put the space in there. Create VLAN 30, name it, capital A, capital, capital H, capital R for HR. Create VLAN 40. Name a capital V voice. Create VLAN 99. Name it management. Create VLAN 100. And name it native. There we go. Type exit twice and show VLAN. We can check our 
or work here. VLAN 10 admin, 20 accounts, 30 HR, 40 voice, 99 management, and 100 NATO. There we go. Looks pretty good. Takes care of part one. On to part two. Assign ports to VLAN. On switch B and C, assign ports to the VLANs. Refer to the addressing table. Assign ports to the VLANs. When we look up here at our addressing table, we can see PC1. PC1 is a NIC of this IP address with this subnet mask, but it connects into switch B VLAN 10. And so what we're interested in over here is this last line. What we have to do on switch B is turn fast ethernet 01 into an access port and then put that into VLAN 10. I'm gonna minimize switch C for right now. Open up switch B. We are currently in glue or sorry, we're in privilege exec mode. Let's go into global configuration mode, config T. Now we can go into the interface. Over here, our addressing table says switch B, fast ethernet 01. Let's go ahead and get into fast ethernet 01, FA 0 slash one. Make sure you gotta type in INT space. So interspa interface space, fast ethernet 01. Our prompt changes here to interface configuration. First thing we need to do is turn it into an access port because you either got to have an it's either an access port or a switch port. Here we're connecting an end device to it. We're in particular we're connecting end device one to that one, and so that needs to be an access port. And the command to do that is switch port mode access. That changes that. Once we switch our port to an access port, now we need to say, what VLAN are you part of? What VLAN are you listening for looking in that 802.13 tagging field? That's another switch port command. So switch port access because it was an access port and then VLAN and then what VLAN number we have. And, and looking back over here in our addressing table, this was VLAN 10. That looks like the right command. Hit enter, there we go. Now we just need to work through the rest of switch B. Right here, PC2 is switch B. Change interfaces. Interface space F0 slash two. Make sure that is a an access port. So switch port mode access. And then Put that into VLAN 20. Put it into VLAN 20. Switch port. Access VLAN 20. And it looks like the last port for us here is fast ethernet 03. Let's go ahead and change to that. INT space F0 slash three. Put that as an access port, so switch port mode access. Oh, forgot the P and switch port once again. Cisco, when I made a mistake, Cisco let me know. I correct it. Oh, I see a second mistake in that line. I corrected the, and there we go. No news is good news. And then last step we have to do is put that in VLAN 30. So we have switch port. Access VLAN 30. And once again, typed it in wrong. Let's go let me know. And typed it in wrong again. And finally got it right. And so Cisco, no news is good news with Cisco. We are currently on switch B. That looks like all the switch B configurations. The rest is for switch C. I'm going to go ahead and minimize switch B right here. Click on switch C, open it up. It logged, it timed out because I was working on switch B for a while. Hit enter, type in enable. 
then config T to get us into privilege exec mode. We're down here on PC4. PC4 is connected into switch C, fast ethernet 01 into VLAN 10. Let's go ahead into interface F01. Make sure that's a switch port, or sorry, an access port. That command is switch port mode access. Once we've turned that into an access port, then we need to make sure that goes into VLAN 10. Switch port access VLAN 10. We have that done down to PC5, PC5, switch C, fast ethernet 02 into VLAN 20. INT space F0 slash 2. That command here is switch port mode access. And then make sure that goes into VLAN 30. Switch port access VLAN 20. Just can't win today. And the last one we have to do here is switch. I guess it's not the last one. We have to do on switch C, fast Ethernet 03 into VLAN 30. Change to fast Ethernet 03, interface space F03. Set it as a access port, switch port mode access. and put it into VLAN 30, switch port access, VLAN 30. Last one we have to do is here for PC7, PC7. We, we're just gonna be concerned about the data porter for right now. We have switch C, fast ethernet 04 into VLAN 10. Go ahead, change to fast ethernet 04, int space f0 slash four. We switch over there, make sure that, or set it as an access port, switch port mode access, and then put that into VLAN 10. Switch port access VLAN 10. Exit, exit, and if we do a show VLAN brief here from privilege exec mode, we can see that we do have VLAN 10 with fast ethernet one and four. That's what we have right here. VLAN 10, fast ethernet one, and VLAN 10 here, fast ethernet four. VLAN 20 accounts. Fast Ethernet 02, we can see that's what PC5 is connected into, and HR. HR here has Fast Ethernet 03. If we look at PC6, Fast Ethernet 03 is in VLAN 30. That takes care of step one. On to step two for part two. Configure the voice VLAN port. If we look at our diagram, and I'm going to minimize our window right here, our configuration, we're going to look at our topology, we can see off of switch C that we have a voice over IP phone connected into the PC. And what happens here is we set port F04, port 4 here, as the data VLAN is VLAN 20, but because we also have that IP phone on there, we also can assign it a second one, and you only can do a second one when it's a voice VLAN. We can set that up as, as the voice VLAN, and that would be VLAN 40 here. That's the one we set up here in part one. We can go ahead and do that. 
Now, to configure that voice VLAN port, we need to go back into Switch C. We need to get into global configuration mode. We need to go into the interface that we're looking at. Once again, we are looking at PC7, which is Switch C Fast Ethernet 04. And so inter interface space Z F0 slash 4. There we go. We are now in interface configuration mode. First thing we have to do is set up our quality of service. Make sure that that voice traffic gets priority through our network. And that command is MLS for multi-layer switch, QoS for quality of service. And then we wanna trust our COS, our cost of service, which is basically a layer to quality of service. Full command here once again was MLS space QoS space trust space COS. Multi-layer switch, quality of service. We're gonna trust our cost of service. And that allows the phone to set its own cost of service at that point in time. Then we have to bring that in and assign the voice VLAN to that port. That is switch port. Now, instead of putting access in there, what we do is we put voice because we already have an access port, an access port assigned for our data. Now we need to set up the voice part. And so it's switch port, space, voice, space, and then VLAN, and then what's the number of our VLAN? Our VLAN here is VLAN 40. Go ahead and we can just put that right in there. VLAN 40, hit enter, exit out once, exit out twice, spell exit correctly. Now we can do that show VLAN brief again. Show VLAN brief. We can see here that VLAN 10, our admin data VLAN, is set up for Fast Ethernet 01 and Fast Ethernet 04. We can also see that our voice VLAN now has Fast Ethernet 4. That takes care of step two for part two. On to step three. Configure the virtual I hope you're liking this episode on practical configuration examples. Leave a comment on what you think about these configuration examples. If you still have a question or comment, please let me know below. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. Configure the virtual management interfaces. First step here is create virtual management interfaces on all three switches. That's creating our SVI, so we have to go in there and create this VLAN 99, which we did already. Then we have to address the virtual management interfaces according to the address table. If we scroll up here, we can see switch A. VLAN 99 is our management. Here is our IP address. Here is our subnet mask. We're not setting a default gateway because we this is a, this is a small learning network. But in a production environment, you want to go in and set your default gateway because odds are you're going to want to manage this from a different network. You're going to have to go through a router. As soon as you go through a router, you need to make sure you have your default gateway on your switch for your switch virtual interface. Let's get into switch A right away. Go ahead and click into switch A. Need to log in. Get into privilege executive mode. Get into global configuration mode, config T. Now we need to go into that interface. Interface VLAN 99. We already created it earlier up in part one. Now we need to go in and assign this IP address. And once again, it's an interface, just like a serial interface or gigabit interface or fast ethernet. We just go ahead, interface space VLAN 99. As soon as you go into it, it brings that VLAN up. When, if you, when we created it the first time and we named it, it just created, it didn't turn it on. But now as soon as we go into it, it turns it, meaning the switch, turns on VLAN 99. Once we're in here, I hit enter, make sure I get it some clean working area. And then we can go ahead and type our IP address command, IP space address space 
And then here's our address from our addressing table, 192.168.99.252. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot ninety nine dot two fifty two, and because we are setting this IP address, we do need to specify the subnet mask. You need the subnet mask when you're setting the IP address. When you're connecting it, connecting to an existing IP address, you don't have to do that. When you ping or you telnet or you SSH to an existing IP address, you don't have to put the subnet mask. But here we're setting up the IP address. You need to put that subnet mask in there. Our subnet mask here is three 255s. I'm gonna go ahead and enter that in. Exit out, exit out. That takes care of switch A. Let's go on to switch B. Go ahead and click on switch B. Log in, type enable to get to privilege exec mode. Type config T to get into global configuration mode. Then we want to go into the interface VLAN 99. Change state to up. We can go ahead and set our IP address from our addressing table right here, 192.168.99.253.24. So IP space address space 192.168.99.253 space and then our three 255s 255 255 255.0 exit out and on to switch C switch C Global configuration mode, config T, get into our interface, VLAN 99. And you can set our IP address of 192.168.99.254 with a slash 24. 192.168.99.254. And then 255, 255.255.0. Part two, step three, that takes care of A and B. Switches should not be able to ping each other. Well, let's confirm that. I'm gonna minimize this. I'm gonna jump on switch A right here. Ping, and then I'm gonna try and ping the IP address for switch B, 192.168.99.253. 192.168.99.253. Now, when you ping from the Cisco operating system, it sends out five pings. With Windows operating it's a system, it sends out four. Here we're sending out five, and we have zero success rate. We can't ping each other. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna try and ping switch C, ping 192.168.99.253. Now, you may think that first one or two here is ARP, but you gotta wait for it to go through. If we get five failures, then we're saying we can't ping it. That completes step three for part two. On to part three, configure static trunking. The reason that we weren't able to ping each other was we created, if we look at our logical topology between PC one here and switch B, we created a access port and we put PC one in VLAN 10 PC two. We put in VLAN 20, created an access port, put PC three in VLAN 30. Now we have three different VLANs worth of information here. In order for us to be able to communicate between these, this no longer needs to be the default. The default is that we need to create this into a trunk. We need to create a trunk connection. That's what port part, wow, well, that's what part three is. Part three is configure static trunking. Configure the link between switch A and B as a static trunk, disable dynamic trunking on this port. Okay, so we need to do a little configuration on A and a little configuration on B. I'm gonna go ahead and click on switch A at this point. We are in here. Now we need to go into the interface that is the connection between switches. If we look at our topology right here, switch A, it's gig zero one, switch B is gig zero one. Let's go ahead, 
go into that interface, config T for global configuration mode. Now we can go into interface space G0 slash one. We are now in interface configuration mode. At this point in time on switch A, we need to just say, you need to be a trunk. We're not worried about any other. In order to turn it into a trunk and disable the dynamic trunking on that port, all you have to do is just say, hey, you're gonna be a trunk, that's it. You, there's no negotiation that's gonna happen. Now we're in the port right here. Let's go ahead and that command here is the switch port because you are dealing with the ports on switch. We're gonna change its mode to trunk. We're gonna say, okay, you are now going to be a trunk. Regardless of anything else, that's all you can be is a trunk. That disables dynamic trunking and we set it as a static trunk. Let's go ahead and do that on switch B. Switch B right here. Global configuration mode, config T, interface G0 slash one. Once again, we are dealing with the switch port. So it's switch port space mode. If we do put a question mark in here, we can see that we can either go an access port that's for one VLAN of information and it sets it unconditionally. It says you're gonna be an access port. We can go trunk here. It sets it to a trunk and says that's all you're gonna be. Or we can go into using our dynamics. Right now, we are just using according to part 3A here we're gonna say you're a static trunk. That's all you're gonna be. So we use the trunk command at this point in time. T-R-U-N-C-K. It takes care of part 3A onto 3B. Disable DTP on the switch port on both ends of the trunk. We need to disable that dynamic trunking protocol. How you disable it is use the non-negotiate. You turn that switch port into a non-negotiation. We just don't want it to use any dynamic trunk at all, so you use non-negotiate. I'm gonna click back here on switch A. We are still in our interface of G01. We are dealing with the settings on that port on the switch, on the switch port. And then here, if I put a question mark in here, this is where we set non-negotiate. Device will not engage in any negotiation protocol on this interface. Go ahead and type switch port space non negotiate. And you can hit enter and I spelt non negotiate wrong. Oh, negotiate. There we go. So now switch A on gig. Zero one is not negotiating. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this, go on to switch B, do the same thing. Switch port non negotiate. That turns off DTP, DTP. DTP is off on both ends of that switch. That takes care of part 3B. Part 3C, configure the trunk with the native VLAN and eliminate any native VLAN conflicts if any up here in our vlan table we can see vlan 100 is our native vlan the default native vlan is vlan 1. good rule of practice always get it out of the default we created a special vlan vlan 100 to handle all of our non-tag traffic that's the native vlan now we got to instruct the switch to use that vlan for any non-tag traffic it gets if i click back here on switch a i am still in our gig 01 port the command here to do that is once again, we are dealing with the port on the switch, that switch port. Then we have to say trunk, because it is a trunk port at this point in time, native VLAN. And then what is our number of our native VLAN? Look at our address or VLAN table it is VLAN 100, just in there. So our command here is switch port space trunk space native space VLAN space 100. Go ahead, press enter, takes care of it. Let's go ahead and do switch B right away. Switch B, notice we are getting inconsistent VLAN ID on there. We are getting errors about our VLAN inconsistency. Our native VLAN is giving us a, a problem. Let's go ahead and take care of that, put our correct VLAN in here. We are still in our interface here. 
our interface of G01. That command here, once again, was switch port, because we are dealing with the switch port. It is a trunk port. And then native VLAN of 100. Go ahead and hit enter. Now we switch to unblocking. Notice we were blocking because we were inconsistent. Now that we are consistent, both ends of that connection, native VLAN is now set to 100. We are now unblocking it. And we are up and we are should be able to send traffic across there. That takes care of that. What that means now is switch B should be able to ping switch A. Let's type exit out once, exit out twice, ping, and then the IP address for switch A, 192.168.99.252, 192.168.99.252, 192.168.99.252, 192.168.99.252. It failed the first two. It was doing that ARP lookup to map that IP address because you typed in ping with a layer three IP address, but data travels across your network by layer two MAC addresses. So it had to go through that address resolution protocol, that ARP lookup. It had to find that, take that IP address and find out what MAC addresses was. So it failed two pings, but then three were successful. If I repeat that command, hit up arrow once and press enter, all five work. Down to step four. Step, or part four, assume that the trunk on port switch C is set to default DTP mode for 2960 switches. Configure G02 on switch A so that it successfully negotiates a trunk with SWC. In order for us to do that, so switch C is set with the default settings, we need to go and configure switch A so then it goes in and sets up a trunk. If switch C is set with the, the default settings, what we have to do is switch, set switch A here to dynamic desirable. That will negotiate a trunk for that. I'm gonna go ahead and click on switch A. Oh, here's our native VLAN mismatch. That was popped up from before. We need to change into our gig zero two. That gig zero two is what switch A uses to connect to switch C. So we need to make sure we change to that interface. And that command here is interface gig zero slash two. We change to it. And then we need to make sure we set it to desirable. The command here to do that, we are dealing with the switch port again. So we start off with switch port. We want to say mode. If we put a question mark here, then it's dynamic. We we don't want an access port. We don't want a trunking port. I guess we do want it to be trunking, but we don't want it to be unconditionally. We want it to dynamically negotiate over this. So we the next word we're gonna put in here is dynamic. Dynamic. And then if I put a space question mark, and if I spell dynamic correctly, and then put a space question mark. We can say either auto, that's the default, that's the parameter here, or desirable, set trunking mode to negotiation parameter desirable. It's going to go try and negotiate a trunk first. If it's not a trunk, then it's going to negotiate an access port. And so we wanted to try to um, negotiate a trunk. So we're gonna put in desirable right there press enter notice our line protocol changed state to up then we went back down and then we went back up right away that was how the operating system goes through and initializes and make changes to those settings that should take care of part four here part four a then we have to configure the trunk with the native vlan and eliminate any vlan conflicts. Oh, I think we already did that. But we can go ahead, we can enter that in there again. It is switch port because we are dealing with the settings on that port on the switch. And then it, it is set up as a trunk. 
Then we set native VLAN 100. And what's happening here is it's saying we have a native VLAN mismatch discovered on gig 02, where I have my VLAN set to 100, with switch C, gig Ethernet 02 is set to VLAN 1. Oh, we have a VLAN mismatch. We didn't set that. So what we have to do is go back and set it switch C here to the correct VLAN. I'm going to go ahead and minimize switch A, click on switch C. You can see here we've got VLAN mismatch errors here. I'm going to go ahead, oh, we're in here, type in enable to privilege exec mode, config T, global configuration mode. There's our VLAN mismatch error again. Get into our interface G02. And now we can go ahead and change that native VLAN. Once again, we are dealing with the switch port. So the first command here is switch port. It is a trunk interface and then native VLAN 100. As soon as I did that, we now switch to unblocking. We should be good to go. Wait a second, see if we get any pop up anymore about VLAN mismatches. We are looking good. We have our trunk configured. It's set up, it's good to go. One last thing we should probably do is just make sure we can ping from PCC, which we're on, to PCA. PCA's, or sorry, not PCA, Switch A. Switch A's IP address here is 192.168.99.252. Hopefully we're doing an ARP lookup and it'll start working. Oh, there we go. We did two failures and three successes. I'm just going to repeat the command, up arrow, hit enter, and we successfully completed it. Look down here, we are at a completion of 100%. So let's just go ahead and check our results. Go to the asset items. We can see we have all green check marks through here. There's no red X's, all green check marks that we've now successfully completed that. That was Packet Tracer Lab 3.6.1, Implement VLANs and Trunking. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on configuration examples. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. There you can find out how to get all these episodes in video and podcast form. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on practical configuration examples for the CCNA. I've created four wonderful playlists for you on the CCNA. These episodes, I go through all the concepts that Cisco calls out for the CCNA. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.